Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, I want to introduce you to the Pythagorean identities, okay? So first, we're going to look into why these things are so important in the study of trigonometry, uh, how exactly they work, and then get into some examples of just using these different identities, okay? So the Pythagorean identities are these three guys right here. And the first one is probably going to be the most important. You have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Then you have tangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared theta. And then lastly, cotangent squared theta plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared theta. Okay? So the thing that you want to know about these identities is first, what on earth are they used for? Well, the most important thing about all these identities is they help us simplify trigonometric expressions. Uh, a lot of times you get lots of different things in your trigonometric expressions. They can get very complicated. And these ones will usually help us crunch them down quite a bit. All right, second, how on earth do they work? Well, you can take the first one, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, and really build it straight from the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, that's why it has the same name, Pythagorean identities, Pythagorean theorem. They're really just the trigonometric form of that Pythagorean theorem. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look, okay? So suppose I wanted to show you why sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta really did equal 1. Okay, so suppose I just start with sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Well, remember that when I have sine, that's equal to y over r in my little right triangle. So this would be y divided by r, and the whole thing is squared. All right, for cosine, I'd have my adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we would say that that is x over r squared. Okay, so that looks pretty good. But I could go ahead and square the top and the bottom. So y squared all over r squared plus x squared all over r squared. All right, now notice here they have exactly the same denominator. So I'd put them together as y squared plus x squared all over r squared. And now here's where that Pythagorean theorem comes into play. So on the top I have y squared plus x squared and that's equal to an r squared. So r squared all over r squared. And of course, these are exactly the same, so I'd say this is equal to 1. So what does this really mean? It means that if I start with sine squared plus cosine squared of theta, it really does equal 1. Now, you'll notice that I didn't necessarily show where all of those other forms come from. The reason is, as long as you know this first one, you can find the other two forms fairly easily. Let me show you how that's done. So suppose we started with sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta plus 1, and we went through and we decided to divide everything by a sine squared of theta. Okay. Well, here I'd have a sine squared theta over a sine squared theta, so that's equal to 1. Here I'd have a cosine squared over a sine squared, so there's our cotangent. And lastly, I'd have 1 over a sine squared. That one would be our cosecant squared. So here's one of those other forms. And you can see all we had to do was build it from the sine squared plus cosine squared. Let me go ahead and rearrange it so it's a little bit more familiar. There we go. All right, what about the other one for tangent? Well, you build it in a very similar way, only this time you divide everything by cosine. So cosine squared theta, cosine squared theta, and cosine squared theta. All right, watch what happens with this. So sine squared over cosine squared, tangent squared theta. Uh, cosine squared over cosine squared, those are the same, so 1. And 1 over cosine squared, there's your secant squared. So these other two guys are built directly from your sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. And of course, you know that this guy is equal to 1, so these guys also work. All right. So let me show you a few examples of how uh, nice these can be for really simplifying some expressions. Uh, let's go ahead and simplify cotangent squared of 35 plus sine squared of 35 plus cosine squared of 35. All right. Thinking about all of the uh, different things we could use, maybe one of the most uh, important things to recognize are these two right here. I have a sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of that same angle. So according to our identity, 
both of those will combine and they will give me just a one. Now this is a lot simpler than what I had before, but actually I can take this and even simplify it even further. If I have cotangent squared of 35 plus one, I can say that this is equal to my cosecant squared. And now I have just a single trigonometric expression being squared instead of one, two, three of them. So a lot simpler. Let's give another one a try. Let's see if we can simplify secant squared of 80 minus tangent squared of 80. All right, so let's see, what can we do with this one? Uh, well, you might recognize that secant is one over cosine. So let's write this as one all over cosine squared of 80 minus, let's see over here, I have sine squared of 80 all over cosine squared of 80. So you'll see that if I change these into sine and cosine, they both have the same denominator. Let's go ahead and put them together into a single fraction. So on the top, one minus sine squared of 80 all over cosine squared of 80. All right, now where do I go from here? What am I going to do to simplify? Remember, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one, and I have a one sitting right there. That means it's completely okay to swap out that one with what it's equal to. So sine squared of 80 plus cosine squared of 80 minus sine squared of 80 all over cosine squared of 80. All right, now why would I wanna put all that in? It looks like I've made it even more complicated. Well, the reason is, is I can borrow one of these sine squareds and cancel it out with this other sine squared. And what you see you have left over, cosine squared of 80 all over cosine squared of 80, and since they're exactly the same, that's all equal to one. So this simplifies immensely. Now the neat part about trigonometry is that you can often find uh, many different ways to do the same problem. In fact, let's do this one more time, only we'll use one of our alternate forms, okay? So we're going to simplify this again, but I'm going to use the identity tangent squared of theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared of theta. And let's see how this works. So this first part, notice how it is a secant squared, which matches this part of my identity. So I'm just going to replace that with a tangent squared of 80 plus 1. And of course, all of this will be the same. All right, now what do I do from here? Well, now that I've swapped that out, I can cancel out my tangent squared of 80 with this minus tangent squared of 80. And see, sure enough, the only thing left is 1. So these steps are a lot shorter, but they get us to the same spot. So it's good to know all of these Pythagorean identities, but especially the first one, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. All right. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.